I just went to the truck to get the camera. I'm down here a few days fiddle farting with this. I could show you a few differences on this and things that I did. Uh, right now it's wired up in Delta. You notice the tree? The tree isn't doing anything. It might die out. That's what it's been doing all day. It's just basically spinning up and then dropping back down. I did see five amps out of it and a little gust. But yeah, it made it spin around real fast. Enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't have the camera at the time, so I figured I'd come out here and get this. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon. Well, right there, if you look at the block I got. It's now got six bolts. They got the little square head so they catch the wood. Got the start and the finishes. Starts are on the top, finishes are on the bottom. And then I got a, all three wires of this extension cord running down the pole. Kind of where it comes right down this tube, up here, and then down the pole there all the way down. Then it's got a loop at the bottom and then comes up here. Anyway, I bet that got you dizzy spinning around. This was slipping on the shaft even though it was tightened up. I'm going to have to put a second nut up on this. But it's not slipping on the shaft now. I drilled a hole in the side of the shaft where this should go and then put it there and it also keeps the pressure off the bearing instead of this tightening up to it and pushing against the race when you're trying to push in a way that's not intended for the bearing it creates a little bit of friction and I, I had a little startup trouble with it before but look at this, this just spins so easy it starts up real nice, nice low winds matter of fact I'm starting to get just a small breeze I bet it stays going for a few BAM! <laughs> Yeah, we're a little close. Yeah, it was starting to pick up. Anyway, go inside, see if we can get a reading. Takes a little bit to get up the starting voltage. Now that I've got it wired in Delta, it takes a little bit more RPM to get to uh, charging voltage. But it's not far off, but there is some loss of power there. Uh, I'd rather go back to uh, Star. I'm going to make another stator. Matter of fact, in taking everything apart, I cracked this one down here. Over tightened it trying to make sure. But anyway, we'll go down and get some uh, readings. Yeah, let's see. Looks like we've got a little bit of a little bit of a breeze. Don't worry, we're backed up. We're out of range of the blades. These are a little bit quieter than the ones I put on the tape drive motor. Well, mainly because I don't have two holes drilled in the ends, uh, in each end. Anyway, before when it spun up, I could hear it. Now you're starting to hear this one. Spinning pretty nice. Got the tail. So I got three phase going down the pole. Let's go play. We might not get another breeze. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Well, got a nice slow breeze. Anyway. One meter around nine. Just what I'm saying. I, I figured I would really want to be uh, just starting at charging voltage here. Now if you hit your charging voltage too early, it causes the blades to stall out. And that's what I had when I had it in Star. So now that it's in Delta, at least when it catches a gust, maybe it'll start doing amps. There's 9 something. Yeah. There's 10, 11. Yep. So anyway, now we get up here and just... The thing about this and the difference between it and the tape drive is kind of surprising. The needle just kind of moves forward quick and then stay, you know, when the wind dies it goes back. I think it's uh, got a better ability at dumping its amps. It's down to about 3 volts, 4 volts, going back up, 5, 6, 7, there's 10, 11. Eh, it didn't quite make it there. There isn't much wind out here. There's nothing out here. It's barely... It looked like it just caught a breeze at probably around six, seven, eight volts. So right about there, right there, is where I want it to hit charging voltage. So when there actually is power in the wind, it'll start uh, doing something. Oh, there we go. I saw the needle wiggle. Let me get a decent little breeze here. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. 
Trees don't seem to be doing much out there. Oh, there we go. Looks like she's holding up there around one amp. Just starting to collect. When the wind picks up, because it's just starting into the charging voltage, the speed of blades have got a lot of lift and a lot of power to work with, so it's easy to... It just kind of cranks it in there. Doing too, not doing too bad. I'm knowing it's not, it's not going to stall that from here on out, no matter what the wind speed. It's just set a little too high. We gotta dial it in, so to speak. Oh, I didn't show you the block down here. All right, here, going up to where the diode is. Where if I use solar, this goes here. If I'm using a DT, uh, DC turbine, I can put it here. This drops a drops a volt. In a, I think no, I'm sorry, 0.7 volts. So might as well just connect it here to the beginning of the ammeter, and that comes down from the uh, the dial bridge rectifier the three phase and the negative clipped right down here to the bottom and got a fuse I really shouldn't uh, fuse isn't really a good thing on a wind turbine if the fuse pops then the winds able to spin it as fast as they want goes for self-destruction got my meter across here measuring the AC when you're reading this over here so that's why the numbers are a little bit low and it's three phase anyway so a little bit more comes on out here that's why when it's showing like 10 11 volts the ammeter started going but all three go here Heat shrink back there to the old line and the three phases going up the pole. Come out here, you're not even hearing it. Blade's barely going. About three and four mile an hour wind. Not doing nothing. Sure feels good. It's up in the triple digits today. Jumped over a hundred. Yeah. Thank goodness for the clouds. Probably what's allowing the wind to generate. Very quiet. If I put a bigger prop on this, it would turn slower, and I could put it back to star. But if it gets up to voltage too, too quick, then that blade will probably stall out. But being as big as it is, I think it would overpower the alternator as it is. So matching your blades to your alternator is a, is a good thing. Maybe if I made this a six-foot prop, it'd do okay on stuff. Six, seven-foot, play with that. That'd probably be okay for it. Yep. Eight, ten, eleven. And just got a little bit of a wiggle. There we go. Nice solar powered refrigerator. One layer of toilet paper to keep the moisture on there and hold it for a bit. About every five minutes, you take this. Start at the top like this and it'll wick all the way down. That works pretty good. It's just a quickie to put it on here. And you can always tell the temperature of what you're uh, refrigerating. Just put your hand on the bottom. Actually, I had this up here and I had the fan off for video, and so this is actually pretty cool. But it did dry up while I was playing on the camera. Oh, yeah. Two on each uh, leg. There we go. Look at that. Listen to the fan. Nice little gust. So she's doing what she's supposed to. Definitely sucking the amps out of it and slowing the blades back down. That's what the battery's for. Time to wet this again. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's, that's drinking temperature. But I'm drinking the coffee. It keeps me sweating. Keeps my body cool, and that way I don't go into stroke. Good little tip. You drink cold things, it makes your neck cold. Blood runs up the back of your neck to a part of your brain. It regulates your body temperature by telling you whether to sweat or not. You drink a Slurpee out there in the heat, you go outside, your body's hot and it's not sweating because your brain told it not to. Because the blood traveling up told it that your body's cooler. And there, that's how you get a stroke. For those that don't know, the best way to cool off is on your arm. It has a lot of surface area and it's not going to your brain first. It goes into your body and cools your body quick. And your legs are even better. Not too bad. That voltage is even after having the inverter on, which has the charger on my phone because I lost the last clip. Now, all day long I've had this fan on and the charge controller keeps blinking five times. It tells me it's uh, staying pretty much on the charge side. It hasn't been really... You know, 70, uh, 70 watts of solar panel sitting on the roof. The sun isn't direct on it. Sometimes it's in the shade. We've had clouds and it's kept up keeping the fan going. Well, my bottle here is saying 80 down here towards the bottom. And at 81, 81, not that bad. Put the fan on it and it'll cool right on down. Well, 
Only one vehicle going by. Looks like traffic died down. Wind's not doing too much, but it's getting a little bit of gust like you see it doing the trees right there. Watch this. Now, when this thing starts producing, listen. You can almost hear it generating. Very quiet. little tin rattling. It's really not doing much, but tomorrow it says 10 to 20 miles per hour. First day in a while. I'm hoping it stays. Maybe the weatherman ain't lying to me this time. But I've spent about four days trying to get reading down here. There we go all of a sudden. Like I say, it's taking the peaks off the top. It's getting the cut-in speed before it gets the charging voltage by a big gap. We're going to close that up and bring it down. This needle will stay over to the right even just slightly. It'll probably stay between 1 amp and 2 amps pretty constant, and then it'll start swinging over to your higher amps. I did see 6 amps out of it. It might have been a little higher because that needle swung over there, so we'll get some better reading. I think I've seen about 150 watts in these little breezes and stuff like that, which isn't too bad for a 5 foot prop, which actually is 4 foot. 9 inches I think after what I cut off with 5 foot length after carving them. Now the tape drive motor at each end of the prop I had two holes drilled and they whistled just a little bit and be just audible and I could hear it when they cut in got up to a little bit of speed. I didn't care it making a little bit of noise. I'm out here by myself and I like hearing it and then knowing when I hear it to look up and see if uh, see what kind of charge is coming on it. So if you round the ends, round the front, sharpen the trailing edge they get very, very quiet, especially rounding the end. The props where I just cut them off straight and don't round the tips, they make noise. You see a lot of blades out there, they should have that company sell that should round the tips. Matter of fact, every, every airplane propeller you see, the tips are rounded, and that's the reason, to keep it quiet. I'm hoping the gust will come back. Oh, yeah, it's kicking up. Got a nice... There you go. Kicking pretty nice. We should stay over there while I got the camera on. Some nice wattage. Not too bad for these low winds. Maybe I'll get a battery for the other meter so I can use it to watch the voltage and we'll use this one for the amps. We'll see what that comes out. I like the analog because you get to see it now. You don't have that delay and you don't miss some of your peaks. I'm Scott Brown, Greenwind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Keep smiling and have a ball. Nice and quiet. Listen. So far, this is the quietest rig I've put up. You can hear the magnets passing the coils just a little bit. Whole lot quieter than something that has a bunch of steel in the middle of the coils. You hear that real loud. Compared to this, anyway. The only sound you're getting is the lens effect into the coils, which is all power generation. The drag on the magnets as it generates passing that coil. Leap when the magnet leads into the coil and then or leaving.
Well, I'm glad to get some nice breezes. This is working out real nice. I checked with the anemometer up on a pole while it was uh, spinning and everything. I couldn't hold the camera and that. I had the anemometer taped to it. Set it up there and I set it for peak. My peak was right at about 12 miles an hour. So that's pretty much what you've been watching on your peaks here. That was just before I turned the camera back on here. I'm going to continue this on in a, in a different video. When I come down tomorrow, we're, uh, and I'm really hoping for the 20 mile an hour winds and see what we get. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Maybe I'll start on winding the coils and figure out how many turns I can get. Take care.